we have here today Martin. He has a presentation about real-time network forensics using at first red porn. I said, yes, let's go there. Let's sign up being Harold. Yeah, he can do that as well. But it is a <laughs> POM NG. I don't know what it is. That's right. Welcome right. to explain this. Please welcome um, Guy Martin. So thanks everyone for coming. Uh, PAMNG is actually Packetomatic Next Generation. So it's the sniffing tool I'm working on and I'll explain how uh, it works with all the challenges uh, that are behind us. So a little bit of the agenda. Uh, first, who am I? Uh, a little bit about network forensics. I'll do an overview of the tool. Talk about the architecture, all the different kind of processing. Uh, there are also the output, the future of the tool, and the Q&A. And of course, there is going to be a live demo. So I suggest I start the live demo now. I'm not sure how it's going to work because it depends on the traffic I'll see. But in a way, uh, I've got a fallback solution with traffic I've got already. So I'm not sure you can see anything, so I'll try to make it bigger. Uh, sit a little bit better. Oh, man, it's... Nah, not really. That sucks. Yeah, all right. That's going to be different. Um, yeah. Can you read this if I make it huge? Is it any better this way? Uh, Barely. Okay, it's gonna be fun. Sorry. Uh, yeah. No, doesn't seem so. So it's the biggest I can do. All right. Okay. So anyway, I'll explain all the things I'll do. So first of all. Sorry, that wasn't planned, so... Okay, did I kill it? Yeah, I killed it. All right, so the plan is to sniff the, the wireless network here, see what is going to be happening while I'm, uh, I'm talking. So first of all, I'll start the, the tool. Okay, not in a, a good way. All right, so I just started by issuing the command pomng t minus t1, and then what I'm going to do is uh, add an input. So input add um, pcap interface, and I'll call it wlan0. OK, I'm not root, so it's not going to work, of course. Yeah, that's a good start, right? All right. You know what? We'll do it later. Doesn't matter. OK, so first, uh, too fast. Who am I? So I'm Guy Martin, that has been explained already. Uh, I'm passionate about networks. Uh, I've been working in networking fields for a year, but really, I just enjoy uh, looking at packets, uh, hexadecimal dumps, ex stuff like that, find out what's happening on the network. Uh, I'm an open source advocate. I'm only using Linux and, and open source stuff as much as I can. Uh, I love C because that's the main language I code in. And I've been doing a few stuff. A big project I've been doing is uh, exposing how to sniff cable modems. So that's the, the, the modem you plug the, the TV cable in uh, on a city wide level. So basically, uh, um, you can see in my previous talks about that. I, I Use um, a DVB-C card, plug the net, uh, plug the TV cable, and sniff everybody in the whole city. And that led me to have a lot of packets, a lot of data, and I didn't know what to do with them. So I started this tool to reanalyze everything, try to parse everything, and and see what I could get out of this traffic. And I've been also porting uh, Gen2 on on HPPA uh, stations, so that gave me a, a lot of input about. Um, uh, low-level uh, debugging and stuff like that. A little recap on network forensics. 
So what's the purpose of network forensic? Well, it's, it's mainly for monitoring the network traffic to, to gather information. Hopefully everybody knows that. Why I do it? Well, proof of concept, be because it's fun and because I can. There are also other tools uh, that do uh, all the, this network forensic. There are, there's Circata, Bro IDS, Explico. They all don't do exactly the same as I do. They do it sometimes better in certain ways. So it depends. I, if you're not happy with mine, I surely <laughs> invite you to go and see those. <laughs> All right, so a little overview of my tool. It's, it's in coded in C mostly and part of LUA. The LUA um, thing is for scripting, so you'll see it's very useful if you want to extract exactly some information. It's fully multi-threaded, it's modular, so you can code uh, if you want a, a plugin for a certain protocol, certain uh, payload you want to analyze, you just code that, and it's going to fit all together in the, the architecture. It's even in payload based, so that's kind of an approach that I've been discussing with a few people and, and apparently it's quite new. Everything that's going to happen in the network will uh, result in an event. Let's say you, you browse a web page, you do a request, that's an event. You have a response, that's another event. Uh, you query a DNS server, you send a query, that's an event. You receive a response, that's an event. And on top of that, there will be analyzers that will see, oh, I had a query, I've got a reply, they both match. OK, uh, I'll create an event that says, I found a new DNS record, and it's valid. Um, the payload, there, it's, it's like the files, everything that is, that is content-based. For example, if you, uh, payload can be multiple things. It can be, um, for example, all the, the files that you send and receive in, uh, in, in an HTTP uh, request, it can be also files into your SMTP session. Like one payload is going to be a multi-part blob, you know, with the, the multi-part MIME type. And that payload will be even then um, split into its own little payload so it can extract everything. And it's also a work in progress because um, there are still bugs, it's still being developed, etc. So how does it work? This is the main architecture. First, uh, you sniff from, uh, you have to, to capture packets, of course. So you can sniff for various things. Uh, usually you're going to sniff from ETH0, ETH1, can be a wireless interface, can be uh, uh, satellite cards, TV cards, uh, whatever you think. Uh, then after that, all those packets are taken and they are parsed layer by layer. So the input will say, OK, this is an Ethernet packet. This is a, an 802.11 packet. So uh, the protocol that, that matches this description will be called. And then each and every protocol above that will be called by, e by the, the previous protocol. So you can really go up to the top, up to HTTP, uh, all, the, all the, the stack of protocols. And you will keep the history of this stack. So it's a lot easier to, um, to act on that later on. All these protocol parsing, they will generate events, as I already explained. They will generate payload, and they will generate packets as well. The packets will contain all this uh, parsing information, so it can be reused. All these information can be reused in the output to uh, either store a file that, that belongs to a specific event. So if you say, let's give an example. Y you, you have a JPEG that comes. And you can see the, the exit data. You can see it has been taken by an iPhone. You can see it's been taken in this location. And because the payload is related to an event, uh, you will have an HTTP request event linked to that payload. And in that request, you can see it's coming from Facebook.com. So you can say, OK, no, I want all the images that comes from Facebook and that were taken in that specific area at that particular time with this specific device. That works. Um, if you, uh, other things, if you want to see like, um, I don't know, uh, DNS uh, requests, if you want to have a, an history of all the DNS requests that happen on your network, since there is an internal uh, DNS cache that will um, save uh, the, the, all the requests and generate an event each time there is a new DNS request, you can just log all those and then review them back if you want to go in the history of all the requests to see if there was some malicious um, uh, host name that was pointing to a botnet or something. So input processing. Each input has, in a, uh, oh, it's in a, sorry, has its own thread. The packet can be queued into a specific 
threads. So uh, it's, as I said, it's fully multi-threads. So you, you receive packets from every single input you have. You can have dozens. It doesn't matter. And then you have multi-threading for all the processing. So all the threads receive a packet, and they start processing it. And as I'm um, running, you can sniff from pickup file interfaces, wired Wi-Fi, DVB interfaces, and also I've added recently Kismet drones. So if you have multiple Kismet drones, you can uh, just connect to them and, and fetch all the packets. Uh, this here's the, the, the good part now. Protocol processing. So because of, uh, well, you know, you have, there are stuff you have to do all the time with protocols. Uh, like you have to keep track of connections. If it's a TCP connection, UDP connection, you have to, um, to handle streams, fragmentation, etc. So I've implemented basic API that allow uh, a new protocol, if you code one or if it's supported already, to, to just reuse those API for connection tracking. Connection tracking works in a way that um, it, it's it's a hash per protocol. So the main challenge here was to find a connection tracking mechanism that was able to uh, to work with every single protocol. So usually when you do connection tracking, you match on a source and a destination value. You might match on other stuff, but that's the, that that almost never happened. So for each protocol, I just simply said, okay, you have to look at this field and this field, take them to create a hash, and you have a connection tracking object. And this allows to create a connection tracking that goes from IPv4, so you have uh, a hash for IPv4, then each connection with those two source and destination address are uh, pointing to different TCP or UDP connection tracking objects. And each TCP connection, for example, if it's HTTP, HTTP will have its own connection tracking object as well. So each protocol can save its own little data about its connection and retrieve the, the whole uh, data from, from the below protocols. Um, an example of, of the protocols that are implemented, Ethernet, of course, DOCSIS, mpeg TS, very useful if you want to sniff uh, DOCSIS cables or uh, even satellite. You can receive the, the, you can point at internet satellite streams, sorry, and you will, it will re recreate all the IP packets based on the uh, MPEG, uh, MPE encapsulation. And of course, if there is another kind of a encapsulation you find out, you code it, just that small part, and it will integrate with everything else. So yeah, a few challenges in, in protocol processing. Well, connection tracking, it took me a few months to find out a good algorithm for that. Like, uh, I've been on it for three months or more. Eventually works very well, and um, I'm really happy with that. But then um, there are more touchy stuff. TCP is stream reassembly. TCP, we all know it's complex. It seems easy at first. You've got a packet. You know where it starts. You know where it ends. Put it in a queue. OK, well, you put them all together next to each other. La la, they queue it. And that's it. You've got your stream. Well, not really. There are uh, a few stuff you stumble upon. For example, some RFC oddities. If you look in RFC uh, 1122, in that very section I've written there, you can find out that RST packets, they can have a text that say, oh, I got your connection disconnected because of whatever reason. And OK, well, that's fine, but you don't expect that. So when you reassemble your stream, you put your RST packet back at the queue, and it's got payload. And then, oh, bam, your file is corrupted with uh, some random text that the, the machine said. <laughs> there are also reuse connections. So um, if you guys, hopefully you guys know how TCP works, but um, as a quick recap, first you have the SYN, SYNAC, ACK, and the SYN. The, the, you have the, the sequence in one way, in the SYNAC you have the sequence in the other way. And sometimes the, the TCP connection got closed and immediately reused. So it sends a SYN, but you have to be careful because the, the, the sequence may be two gigabytes off. So what do you do? Because in the TCP processing uh, algorithm that I use, if, if I miss a packet, one, what am I going to do? Well, I, I need to do something with that missed packet. So I cannot just ignore it and forget about it and concatenate everything that's, that's after that. No, no, I have to insert a gap, like empty data. This way, if you're reassembling a video, it allows you to uh, simply have zero, I mean, bytes written with zeros, and the video can just continue smoothly playing while you have, you'll have a bit of, uh, of crap on the screen, but that, that will not hurt. Um, 
so what do I do with this new sequence? It's like far off. So I have to check that the sequence is not too far off, make sure I know the sequence already and keep the state and everything. It's, it's definitely um, not easy, especially as well when I've seen uh, machines doing SYNAC, uh, sorry, SYN, SYNAC, and then they send the ACK back, and then just a few seconds later, they send a SYN back, and, and the syn another SYNAC comes back. And, and you don't know wh which is the connection that's been negotiated. Uh, the, 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 the sequence are just a few bytes away. You don't know what to do, and blah, it, it bombs out. It's really, really hard. So if, if you guys have input on that, if you want to look at the code, uh, feel free to do, to do so. Uh, another, I'll just give here a few challenges, not a lot. But uh, DNS record processing, of course, you can just send, send DNS reply. They are not authentic sorry, authenticated or anything. So I had to make sure first to keep a track of all the queries um, and then eventually uh, receive all the response, my gem on the queries. That was uh, not so easy because afterwards you have to handle the, the expiration of records. So what do you do? The, the, the main goal here was to, um, I get all these, for example, let's, let me give you an example. You're sniffing an access point. You sniff an access point, and mostly what you'll have, let's say the, the scenario is the following. You are here, the access point is here, and the client is here. You will m mostly not receive packets back from the client. You will only receive the packets from the access point, because the, cli the client is definitely too far off for you to, to, uh, to sniff. So what you will see, you will see HTTP uh, reply coming. Those are very useful because they contain, for example, HTTP cookies, uh, which you can reuse for, for sessions, etc. Um, well, the problem is that you don't know to which host they connected. Facebook, like if you, I, I, I like to, to use this target because it's a funny one, but Facebook, if you um, see the DNS record changes every five minutes, and you, you really would have yourself to query facebook.com, see, okay, what IP address correspond to, to, to this? Um, uh, sorry, what house name correspond to this IP address? Is it Facebook, is it not? So here you will receive the DNS reply because the client asked, where who's facebook.com? And the, the, the IP will broadcast, there it is. You just say you, you don't care about validity of record because you haven't had the, the query, so you just accept it. And then it will be in the cache, so when you receive the, the, the HTTP response back with the session cookie, the cache will tell you automatically, okay, this, has this IP address is facebook.com, so you can, it can update the event, and then you will be able to uh, store that session cookie in your log. So event analysis, as I already explained what the events were, um, so all the protocols, they parse uh, th those events, and also they are event analyzers. So you receive a qu an HTTP request, you receive an HTTP query, you know what to do, which one is which. So the analyzers are able to keep track of those two events, the query, the response, and then create a new event that contain uh, the, the data for both events. So this way, uh, you can have everything in one single event. Um, yeah, DNS record as well is one of the even SMTP oath is a different kind of uh, correlation. In in SMTP, you receive comments and reply. So you have the comment which is like hello. The server will reply 220 uh, hello. I'm blah blah, and then you will keep on f the next command you might do is oath plain oath login, and you receive the reply which is going to say okay or not, and the analyzer just listens for those events, correlate them all together, and eventually generate an SMTP oath event that tells you, okay, this guy, client address, server name, server host name, uh, try to authenticate with the plane or the login method, and it used um, uh, this username and password. That's the most interesting bit, of course. <laughs> all right, afterwards, we have payload analysis. So. All those files that you receive, you, you're never sure what they are. If you look at HTTP reply, for example, on some video website, if you receive video, they actually say it's plain text. This way, when you try to sniff it, it will, well, when you try to, to capture all the video with other tools, they will see, oh, it's text, I don't care, all right. Well, no, you can work, work this around. Uh, first of all, those, so you can use those MIME types. 
but it's not always accurate. So what you can do is uh, use a little bit of magic. As you know, the command file on Linux, it's, it's got lib magic, and you can use that library to identify what the payload is really. So this is all done automatically. When you, in, in your code, you say, I've got a new payload, I've got a new file, I think it's this, uh, but please do some magic on it. The API will say, okay, I got this. I look at the magic, oh, okay, it's not that. It corrects the right, it puts the right payload on, and this payload be, will be able to be analyzed by the um, actual payload analyzer. And this payload analyzer will say, okay, I got a JPEG. It was flagged at te as text, but that doesn't matter. I got a JPEG. What am I going to do? Oh, okay, is there exif data, et cetera? And it will feed all those data into the payload object and you will be able to to receive all these information in your both your in your output that you will script in LUA. I'll see you later. I'll show you later. It's very easy. You just say, okay, um, uh, take this data. I want this data. I want this data. Print it, and that's it. Uh, there is of course uh, support for uh, content encoding. So. In HTTP, they compress everything. Well, most of the time, the response is compressed. Same goes in, in uh, SMTP. It's encoded in base64, uh, all the, the content. So the, you just say, OK, you don't have to handle that in your code. You just say, it's gzip, it's base64. Uh, there is even function that will simply, you give the right header, it's going to parse it and update the, 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 the tags. And if the payloads need to be processed, then it will be decoded and analyzed, etc. So it might just decode the few first bytes to get the header, get the, the size of the image, the exif data, or, or whatever information, and then it will just drop it. So that minimizes the, um, the CPU consumption. And um, yeah, so there's also the multipart processing. So if you receive one big chunk, like an RFC 80, um, 822 message that contains headers, and then uh, a payload would, will be multi-part, like you'll have multiple attachment. This analyzer will create smaller payload, and if, of course, you have a GZP payload or a Base64 payload, will be able to, uh, to get this. So if you want to receive images from any single protocol that it, be, uh, that it supported, it's possible. You just enable all the events that create payloads, and then all the payload are going to come to your output, and you, you can just act on all of them. So uh, the outputs. There are a few existing outputs. The, the standard one, the, so log txt to log uh, stuff in text, so based on the template. In the template, uh, it's an XML template. You just uh, you say, OK, I want this field, this field, this field, and I want to output this specific line. Um, so it's very useful if you want to log all the HTTP query in a, into an Apache log file form. You use that logstxt, you say template HTTP Apache, and it will log everything like Apache would do. Uh, there are also other logs um, I can show you later on. Uh, log XML, it's to log the, the events in an, in an XML format, so you can reuse them easily. Uh, PCAP, to store packets into files. It's useful because this software uh, supports inputs that are not easily, uh, um, you cannot sniff easily from usually. For example, DVB interfaces, it's not easy to sniff from a DVB interface. So it, it, with this output, you can just get the DVB uh, packets, the MPEG packets, and tell, OK, save only the, the MPEG layer, the DOCSIS layer, or the IPv4 layer, Ethernet layer, whatever. So y you, you can extract specific things with, with a filter as well. Uh, you have a tap um, uh, output, which is very useful if you want to use other tools to analyze the traffic at the same time. You can sniff from that specific DVB interface, your Kismet drone, whatever, create the tap interface, all the packets are sent there, and you make your other tool listen on that, and it will uh, process the packets are as if they were coming from a normal interface. And file, the output file, which saves uh, files into payload. All right, so I think it's time for the demo, if that will work eventually. Let's do it another way. OK. So I've started it at the top, and uh, I'll load, no, I'll do it by hand. 
so what I'm uh, what I'm gonna do now is I've got a, a, some of you might have seen the sniff box I call it. It's like a, a box like this with four big wireless antennas stuffed with four wireless cards, a Guru plug, and a Kismet drone on it. So I'm gonna connect to it and see if there is any traffic and see if anybody is like uh, sniffing. Uh, I mean, sorry, surfing the web or anything. So uh, first of all, I, uh, the way you, you do that, you start your sniffer here, down here, uh, with a simple command, and then you connect it to the um, to the interface. So I'll add an input. So the command is input add. You see, if I hit tab, there are a few uh, inputs. I'll choose the input Kismet drone. I'll call it uh, Sniffbox. So this is my input Sniffbox. Sniffbox zero. Ah, that's even better. Uh, I'll add, so no, if I do input show, you can see the input sniff box zero. It's not running, it's like Kismet drone, no packets, no runtime. Host is localhost, that's not correct, so I'll just input parameter set sniff box zero, host, and then the host is uh, this one, if I remember correctly, and if you want to connect, feel free to do so. All right, that's it. So now I only have to start the input, but starting the output, the input without any output is not really fun. So let's add some output. Um, I, I've added. Uh, uh, let's start an output. Let's say the wall of sheep output. I like this one. Uh, well, no promise is going to work, but so I coded that like this morning. Uh, I'll call it sheep. So output add wall of sheep. That's the type of the output, and uh, I'll call it sheep. Output show sheep, you can see, oh, sheep, uh, you, I don't know, sorry, output show. So you can see I've got my sheep output. It's going to log into wall of sheep. I'll change that. So output parameter set log file, no, sorry, sheep log file, uh, slash tmp slash sheeps dot log. OK, I start the output. No, all right, let, let's do um, a more common one. I, I want to see all the HTTP requests as well. So output add, this one is log.txt, as I explained, and I'll call it a, a, page, a page logs. Logs, OK. So uh, if I look at all my outputs, I've got the Apache log output, which the template is not set. So I'll have to, um, to set the right template output parameter set apache log template uh, http apache and then i'll uh, okay the prefix is right so i can start that output as well and then i just need to start the input so input starts sniffbox zero and there we go okay i don't have internet access i forgot about that <laughs> is there a cable i can connect to Yeah, I can try wireless, but it's been quite flaky, unfortunately. Ah, no, I might have. No. Uh. All right, let's see. Discover, give me your new IP. Oh, you can't. You guys can't see. Okay, I got an IP address. Excellent. So let's try this again. Hopefully it's going to connect. We'll see how it works. No, it doesn't seem to be connecting at all. Yeah, whatever. I got other capture files, so it doesn't matter. No. Connection refused. Uh, that crap rebooted. Uh, uh, sorry about that. No. Nope. Visitor. Not cam. Not OHM. What time is it actually? Okay. Yeah, it's down. Oh no, it's not. Okay. Yeah, it did reboot. Yeah. So I just start the Kismet drone here. Uh, I need to do a little funny stuff with the. Uh, so you see, just okay. So if you look, I'm not sure you can see, but. No, you can't. Eh? That sucks. Maybe bigger. Still can't. No. All right. Anyway, I can't see either. Anyway, 
So I just started Kiss My Drone on this box and I can connect to it. So all right, here, what do we have? It's connected to the input Kiss My Drone and of course the network is too slow so it doesn't work but it found that it's got four interfaces, 2.4 G1, G6, G16 and 5 GHz, 13. But each time I connect the, the network is flaky so yeah, okay. Anyway. That's no problem. We'll use another input. So input add. Uh, I've got some pickup files into, uh, let me show you. So I've been running an access point in my place, like with SSID default. All right, fine. People connected to it, fine, no problem. Well, actually, maybe. And I've got uh, 22 gigs of, of, of pickup files out of that. Well, of course, there were a few stuff. All right, so what can I do with those pickup files? Well, pff, same thing, huh? you just, uh, if I can find it. So I have input add pickup directory, and I'll call it uh, captures zero, capture zero is fine. Input show, so input parameters set capture zero directory, um, that'll be, where is it? Uh, Okay, this guy here. And I started. All right, so uh, there are a few files on, so it's going to take a while. First of all, it's um, scanning the wall. Sorry, scanning the world directory to find all the files and put them in order because it cannot process packets that were a day before and then a day after. So it has to, to because the, it, it derives the clock source from the, the input you're sniffing. So if you have old pickup files, the, the timestamp is in the pickup file. So all the timestamp that will be in the output will be the right one. They will be the one that, not the system ones, of course. Maybe I can set some uh, debug. No, come on. Uh, log level set four, and then yeah, you see it's adding all the packets to the list, so we can have it wait. All right, it started, excellent. So now it's processing packets. There are a few, so it's going to take some time. Let's switch to another screen. Okay, let's see what we have. So I started everything in slash TMP. As you can see, I've got all the HTTP requests that are being parsed here. And uh, there are quite a few. So those are all the HTTP requests it's able to parse from, from, from those data. It's going pretty fast, in my opinion. But then the most interesting file, let's see what we have in sheeps. Oh, we already have a few. Of course, I've hidden the password a little bit, only displaying the first two characters. But you can see that people here were connecting through SMTP, this IP address, which was a local one, to this, that host. With that user, the password, it used the method uh, plain, and um, status was success. So it, because it's able to see that the, the authentication worked, it, it, it says immediately if it worked or not in the logs, so you don't have to bother trying it out. All right, so it's still processing. There are 22, 22 gig of capture. It takes, well, what, what is slowing down is the hard drive. It cannot keep up with the processing, so we can let it run, or I can show you how it's actually done. Okay, let me do, make me huge. Uh, all right, let's see wall of cheap. That's the most interesting one. Hopefully, oh, let me G equal uh, light, is it? Yes, okay. How does it work? Well, this is one of the Lua script uh, that creates that wall of cheap output. So how does it work? Well, first you have to, to declare your, your output. So you've got output wall of cheap here. Uh, you say pom that output that new wall of cheap and you give the parameters. It's like log file, it's a string, it's called gonna be wall of cheap dot log the default value and the description is log file. 
And then uh, let's go down a little bit further. You, this, you have to register your output. It's very easy. It's the output name of the script underscore register will be called when the script is loaded. And you just do pom that output that register output wall of cheap. So that's your Lua uh, class, and that's all. Afterwards, you need two uh, functions to that class. It's open and close. Open, close, open, you, um, you do all the, you just say what you want them to do really easily. You, just, you say that you open the log file, that you, so para, you get the parameter log file, and you open it for a happening, appending, sorry. You store it in the log file variable, and then you listen to all the HTTP request events. To do that, uh, you just say self that uh, self even listen start. You want the event which is HTTP request. So all the events have a name. They're all documented on the wiki. Uh, nothing to do when starting the event, no, and then use this function when the event stops. So yeah, I forgot to say about that about the events. They always uh, there always a time when the event starts and when the event stops. So you start receiving uh, an HTTP response and then uh, you stop receiving an HTTP response. The, the, the main difference that is that at the start time, you know, uh, you, you have more information about the packets that trigger that. Uh, you have the, the whole stack that, that, that triggered that, the, the whole protocol stack. But when the, the even stop, you don't because it might be stopping because of a timer that expired, like if the, the TCP connection is closed. So you have less info when the, the even start. You have all the info when the even stop, but you don't have the packet that triggered that because it might not be triggered by a packet. So, um, oh man, the screen is really not nice to read. Huh? Um, I also listen to the SMTP oath even. That as well, it will call the process SMTP oath function. And that's about it. For stopping, I check if I've got a lock file, I close it, and I stop listening to the HTTP request and SMTP oath even. So that is almost all of it. Afterwards, well, you have two, your two functions that process the event. You could have just one e function and, and do a, a NIF statement on the, the event type. Output, HTTP, uh, output wall of cheap process HTTP request. Lo the data, so it's the, the uh, argument evt that is passed, evt.data. I say data, the, the username is data username, password data uh, password. If not username or password, then we don't care about this even because there is no authentication. Client data, the client address data. Uh, so same for the, the server, you got the server name, uh, the status uh, for the, the, um, the status code. If it's 200, 401, you'll see immediately if the authentication succeeded or not. And simply, you, you write into your log file, found credential via HTTP using this client, this server, user is username, password is password. Uh, and status is status. Same thing goes for uh, SMTP authentication. Uh, a little bit more complex because there are multiple types of authentications, but basically it's the same. Gather the event data, server hosts. Uh, if it, you don't know the server host, which might happen because it was not found in the DNS request, fall back to the server address. Uh, you can al you also have the server hello, uh, you know, the, the value it it gives when on the 220, the, the first message it gives. Um, well, that's the debug stuff. Get the username for the parameter from the, the, the specific authentication parameters, the method that was used, and you log it a little bit down. So you simply write uh, fun creation via SMTP, that's what we've seen before. Client address, server address, username, password. Uh, method and status. Of course, this is why you don't see the full password because I've only taken the first two letters and appended dot dot dot, but basically it's all there. So that's it. That's all you call, or you, you code wall of cheap. Uh, and I cannot, no, it's so far. Ah, okay. Let's see. Okay, it's done running. So, yeah, we've had a few. So you can see is here. It's mostly HTTP, SMTP. One SMTP from an Android client with 
user Android, password, uh, WD something, but we know it worked because the status was 200. Okay, uh, what Q, oh, Uncle Muller, nice. I might need to save those images. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, what time is it? Let's see, date. Okay, 41. Yeah, I could show one more example, but basically saving all the images I'm, I'm seeing on the internet. Uh, I'm afraid to do it with those data because I'm not sure what's going to end up. <laughs> so I might just... Mm. We can't see anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, okay, let's try something. Um, I'll I'll, uh, I'll I'll create so I'll I'll stop it and create a new. Uh, is it you can't see? Okay, so I restarted. Of course, you can save configurations and everything. Um, so config load. You see, I've got a few configs, which help me to to test stuff. But I prefer to show the the whole um, the whole thing. So input add pcap interface. Uh, yeah, I'm still not root. Blah blah blah. Uh, export LTE library. I've not done the make install, so that why that's why. Okay, yeah, because it's already running. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I connect back to it. So I've I've started as root now. Okay, so let's add an input. So input add um, pcap interface, and I'll call it wlan zero. Input parameter set. No, input show, so, oh, it already found out the, the suitable interface was WLAN0, so I can just start it, but uh, let's dump all the files. I think I've got input, uh, output add HTTP uh, images, I'll call it. So output show, okay, so the, the this input, this output HTTP is also another script uh, that I coded to show that you can dump images video and you can also uh, say I want that the, the minimum surface, f the, the, the minimum size for an image is, is 900, um, sorry, 90,000 which is about 300 times 300 but you never know if an image is going to be huge and uh, I mean tall but sm uh, not large so I just prefer to put the product there. So I'm going to log every thing, all the images related stuff into HTTP.log and the log format will be the following. So uh, output start images, input start WLAN zero. Okay, let's start a browser and see if we can um, go on a website simply. If Firefox deems to start, come on. Okay, there we are. That doesn't work, it's good. We're not gonna, okay. Uh, uh, did I lose the wireless network? Yes, I lost it, cool. Um. Yep. And if I can't do that, <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, nothing wants to work today. That's Okay, let's see. Do you have internet? Yeah, almost. DH. Yes, I've got an IP address. That's a good start. All right, so you guys have a website you fancy? Wow, okay, it's the stupidest website on earth. Did I start the input? Because if I didn't, then we are screwed. Where is it? Yes, it started. Output show. Output is running as well. Okay. Nine gig. Ray. All right. Let's see. Hopefully that worked. Yeah. There is uh, no. There are no images. Okay. Fine. 
Yeah, okay, it doesn't it doesn't work. Ah crap. That's not very convincing, is it? Yeah, it's got packets for show you can you see you get you've got all those uh, details, so it's found nine HTTP. There are currently nine HTTP connection, total eighteen connection. You can see here. So these are all the protocols. Well, it's, it's missing a little bit, but you have all the details about each protocol. So this might be ICMP or no, this is HTTP. So nine connections currently happening. So it it has nine uh, contract objects for this connection. It's seen eighteen connection in total, one hundred thirty one packets, and this amount of bytes. Uh, so it, it's quite useful to, to troubleshoot if you uh, if you need to, and it still didn't find anything. I don't know. I yeah. Okay. Uh, well, it doesn't work. I have to check because I might have s forgotten something. Anyway, let's go back to the presentation. All right, so what is the future of this tool? Well, obviously, support more protocols. Uh, that is the hardest part. One, each protocol is like a, s a single project in its own. I started to code the SMTP protocol a few months ago, and I was like, oh, SMTP, it's, it's so easy. I mean, it's simple mail transfer protocol. It's simple. It's, it's in the name. Well, it's not. Because uh, you code SMTP, all right, fine. You got your payload. And then I was like, okay, fine, look, I got this whole email, but it's with those crappy MIME RFCs that I've got to parse. And it took me more time to, to code those MIME RFCs to, to be able to decode all those emails, all the payloads of the email, the multi-part, the encoding. Oh, man. <sighs> See, I lost my hair, that's why. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's the thing. Uh, Additional protocols, these just my the, the next protocols will probably be POP3 IMAP because that's the main ones being used. Uh, you can also do pretty much everything with HTTP protocol because everything goes through HTTP nowadays. Um, the next uh, item on my agenda as well is better database support because here you cannot log into a database right now. What will be cool is that that text output that you've seen will just feed a Postgres database and then you can just issue your select uh, comments on that. So, sorry? Yeah, yeah, of course, you can connect more than one and feed it one single database, or you can connect multiple inpu outpu uh, inputs to a single one. It's up to you. So, um, yeah, and of course, the, the database support is modular as well. Currently, there is SQLite, but I'll add Postgres. I'm working on Postgres. So I'll add, I'll add uh, my MySQL, and whatever uh, people need uh, can be added fairly easily as well. Additional output will be uh, something I need to work on as well, but mostly through uh, through scripts, because that's the the easiest way to to um, to create new kind of output. So I've created an add-on repository. I'm going to commit all those scripts that I've uh, shown today. So I forgot about the the cookie session stealing scripts, which is basically the same, just. Uh, looking at the, the host name, is it one in my list? Oh, Facebook.com, yes, okay. Does it have the DATR and C user uh, value in the cookie? Yes, okay, store it. Might be in a database and then you know what to do. And next uh, thing on my agenda is whatever you wish because I'm always, input, always, always open for input. So if there are things I haven't been thinking about and you, you like to see, then uh, come to me and that can definitely be arranged. All right, thank you for attending. If you have any questions. Check, yeah. Hi, very nice project. I would like to ask you a couple of things. The first one is, what is the maximum speed that you reach without losing packets? Uh, on uh, a common hand, hardware uh, hardware specific to, to have a, a big system to, to wiretap on a on fast network? Well, um, good question, because the problem is that the, 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 
the CPU needed depends on the output that you use. Because uh, if one input says, I want to listen to that specific event, then the, the event will start to process. So I try to mini minimize the CPU usage as much as I can. So if something is not used, it's not going to be processed, and it's just going to be skipped. So it depends what you want to do. If you want to process only D DNS packets, I think it will be pretty fast. If you want to start processing all the HTTP with uh, encrypted, um, sorry, uh, compressed payload, etc., it will obviously take more CPU. So it's really on a case-by-case -case basis. But as you've seen, I've parsed 22 gigs of uh, PCAP in, in a fairly small amount of time. So it might not be gigabit, but I think 100 megs is, it might yeah, be sustainable. I is when you try to searching something in real time, so you have to process in real time to find whatever you pr you want. Well, you you can do two things: either you take everything, you extract everything, and you look that up later, or uh, it, it really depends how you customize your output. As you've seen, it's really easy to to script. So if you just want to output everything, do it, save it somewhere, and then you search. Uh, but if you can do some pre pre uh, um, preemptive filter before, then you, you know it would remit the amount of data that you you get. That works too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.